Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening to celebrate um, our new addition at School Without Walls. Uh, I am Coretta Bridges, the principal of this wonderful, wonderful school. Very proud principal of this school. So I am happy to begin with um, introducing one of our seniors here, Ms. Tavion Griffin, and she is going to lead us in the Black National Anthem of Lift Every Voice and Sing. And I believe it should be in your programs if you have one. And if you don't, kind of raise your hand and we'll, we'll make sure you get a program so that you can sing along with her. Tavion. Can we have everyone please stand? Thank you. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Out of the gloomy past, till now we stand at last with the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Facing our As you can see, she is not shy. <laughs> so again, I just want to offer greetings and welcome to you all. And you will be introduced as we go through our program to our, our distinguished guests on stage. And so at this time, I am actually going to ask one of our students, Malik Jaff, to come forward. And Malik, Malik happens to also be the student rep for the district on the Board of Education, one of School Without Walls' own. And Malik is going to share with you some of School Without Walls' values. So all members of the School Without Walls community, both adults and students, strive to learn and demonstrate the following character values. Nonviolence by any means necessary. There is always a positive way to resolve an issue. Perseverance despite all obstacles. Truth regardless of the consequences. Courage to do what is right, even if it wasn't your fault. Compassion for all. Responsibility with no excuses 
respectfulness under all circumstances, and curiosity. Every day, learn something new. Is that it? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Malik. We have a lot of talent here at School Without Walls. So before we move any further with our program, um, I wanted to, to speak just a little bit, a few brief remarks um, about School Without Walls. And how many of you can remember that what this building used to be? the portion of this building. I see some hands. What is it I hear? Sears. Sears, right? Sears. No washing machines being sold here now, right? It's a long time ago, a long time ago. And so um, many people have, have questioned, what is school without walls? And people that haven't been here wonder, they don't have walls? Never, how do you have school with no walls? And you know, that's always the question. People come in and then when they come, they say, oh, you do have walls? Yeah, we do have actual physical walls, but we also know that learning is not confined inside these walls. Learning goes well beyond these walls outside into the big wide world. And that's what we teach our students here to do. And that's why we're called School Without Walls, because we don't confine children to just learning inside these brick and mortar walls with textbooks um, and not having them explore the wider world around them. And so School Without Walls, extends beyond these walls and our children are free to explore the world around them. They provide service to their community. They're taught to speak, take action, and fight for social justice. They learn to be comfortable with who they are and speak their minds. They go on to study in some of the best colleges and universities in the country and abroad. They are business owners, fashion designers, poets, journalists, chefs, authors, teachers, activists, motivational speakers, entertainers. I could go on and on, but whatever their chosen profession, School Without Walls graduates are individuals who are prepared to face whatever challenges life brings their way and navigate this big wide world, making it a better place for all of us. So right now, I wanna recognize folks who are out here in the audience. There are a lot of current School Without Walls staff members here. Staff members, let me see your hands in the air. Let me hear you, make some noise. <laughs> Any past School Without Walls staff members here. Any past School Without Walls? Oh, I see a, a couple of hands here. Okay. How about past students or graduates? Do we have any graduates with us tonight? Absolutely. And then how about my current School Without Walls students? All right. So, so we're here, and they're very proud of their school. But we also have a very, oh, and I wanted to recognize my assistant principal. Can you wave your hand there? She's kind of short. Can you see her? <laughs> That's Miss Lakeisha Wilson, and she helps me to, to keep this place going every day. So I appreciate her being here tonight with us. Okay, so additionally, how about parents? School Without Walls parents, where are the parents? I know we have some, there they are, they're here, they're here, absolutely, absolutely. And are, are any of our community service providers here tonight? I know some are inside and I see some out here. Yep, over here. Okay, thank you so much for joining us tonight. But we also have a surprise guest tonight, a surprise guest and this young man contacted, <laughs> contacted us because he has some very special information about School Without Walls that only he can share with us. I'm sure there are others, but certainly more than I could because he is one of the actual founding members 
of School Without Walls. The discussions to begin this school began all the way back in 1968-ish. And so this young man was a part of those discussions and the development of School Without Walls. And so I want to invite him to share some of that history with you to give you more insight about our school. So we welcome Mr. Warren Frankel. Thank you. <clears throat> Hopefully my voice will last. You know, I was very fortunate to be working with a fantastic group of colleagues at Monroe High School, where I was from 60, uh, two to 70. We o the actual building or the school opened up in 1971. The late 60s were a much time of turbulence and some of us realized we needed a new approach to education. A lot of anger. College age people were angry at the government for sending them to the Vietnam War, which they was very unpopular. Adults were angry with the corporations for screwing up the environment. Uh, minorities were angry for not being treated fairly by the law. And uh, young people in high school began to question and demand that they have a say in what they're going to learn instead of being all education, all courses being driven from the state regents and down. Um, the founders of School Out Walls created a non-traditional school we used an old adage, give a person a fish and they'll eat today, give them, uh, or teach them how to fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. And that was one of the first things that really put us together in mind in our early meetings. Uh, we had a lot of support for that. Uh, the School Without Walls actually opened its doors, I say, in uh, 1971, except we didn't have any walls. It's amazing to think how we survived back in those days. Our classrooms were borrowed places in the community, from storefronts to churches to the old JY, which is now the Arrow East Building. And we did have one very large hall that we could meet in once a week. And we had something called a town meeting, not unlike Quaker meetings. And the early students were the ones who made the decisions and what the school is all about how they were gonna graduate, and all the rules that accompanied our living together. Now, I will mention it was only 150 students. And it was a very close-knit body, and, uh, but then decisions were not easy to come by, and uh, I, I think over the years, a lot of that early discussion and listening to students really uh, kept this place going. School Out Walls really is a metaphor on many levels. Uh, we found, we founders believed that learning took place, uh, as Coretta just said, uh, not necessarily in the confines of a classroom, but in, throughout their everyday lives and community. Our students spent much time learning as apprentices, working in organizations with people in areas of interest, auditing college classes, and volunteering for nonprofit organizations. Another metaphor involved the, the belief that we did not live our lives thinking math for an hour, English for an hour, history for an hour, but that we combined our knowledge and, and, removed the ba and we tried to remove the basic academic walls. Another idea was to abolish authority, uh, or at least the authority role of staff. Uh, our students called us by our first name. We gave up the ties and mandatory jackets of that era, we allowed to, um, uh, we tried to become trusted members of, of the student body. Uh, we did this by allowing uh, our students to meet with us also a half an hour every week, uh, every week uh, throughout the school year, so they could get to know us, we could get to know them, and help develop their particular interests. It was called a student-motivated curriculum. Um, we did away even with grades and used evaluations to judge whether students reached the learning goals they created. We believed learning crossed all, academic, uh, <clears throat> crossed all academics and we trusted students to follow through and have a say in their final evaluations. While you now have these new great walls, 
I can only hope that some of the philosophy and goals will continue to permeate these new walls and not wall off a lot of the traditions School Without Walls has modeled for the entire student community. A community. I wish you good learning, a good year, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Frankel, for joining us tonight. So at this time, I am going to present some of our students again. And as I'm speaking, if they'll come on up and kind of circle around here. So this is our slam poetry team. And they have prepared a special poem. Oh, I think that you're going to stay down there. You don't want to come up here? OK. No? All right. OK. So they're setting up, setting themselves up. And this is a poem that they have written about School Without Walls, the school that they are so proud to be a part of. And so you will hear their voices um, in this poem and their teacher, Miss Mariana Berry. She's a little short too, but she can wave her hand there. <laughs> uh-huh. So she she helped them pull this all together. Thank you. Coretta gave us two weeks to put together this slam poem for you. <laughs> so they took about a week to write it and a week to practice, slash this week, last couple days. And this is called the School Without Walls poem because we weren't more creative than that. One second. <laughs>
Wasn't that awesome? Let's give them a second round of applause. <laughs> so I was really, really proud of them when they invited me in to hear their rehearsal of that speech. So, it, and they were a little nervous, but they, I couldn't tell, could you? They did a great job. Thank you guys. Okay, so we're gonna continue moving along. Um, unfortunately, um, Mayor Warren was not able um, to be with us this evening. However, we do have a representative from City Hall. Her name is Miss Sandra Simon, and she is the Director of Special Projects. And so we're going to hear from her right now. Good afternoon, everyone. Give yourself a hand. This is a beautiful school. Wow. It wasn't like this when I was growing up, but that's okay. I'm grown up. <laughs> you guys got to get where I am now, right? Listen, I want to do this on behalf of our mayor, Mayor Lovely A. Warren, who couldn't join you this evening, and she sends her apologies. But she says you should be very proud of yourself, very proud of this school, very proud of what you're going to become, and very proud of that you're going to lead us into the future. She said we, think we should think we should give the Rochester Joint School Commission, I'm not sorry, Construction Board and Project man Manager Engineers a round of applause for their creative vision and design for this fabulous new school. Will you just raise your hand so they'll know who we're talking about? Let's give them a hand. You'll hear more about them le later. They have done a marvelous job modernizing School Without Walls and giving all of the amenities you need both to learn and to teach. I also want to say a very special thank you to the architects for this project. Clark Patterson Lee, as well as the Pike Company, who serve as construction managers. Are they here? Oh, there they are in the back. Let's give them a hand also. Your craftsmanship and attention to details have shaped school without walls into a first-class facility, one that will serve our students in our community for many years to come. When our students and teachers and administrators, staff walk into this school, they are walking to a building that looks good, that feels good, and makes them be good. And when you feel good, it inspires you. You're inspired to do your best, to be the best, the best students, the best teachers, the best administrators, the best lunch lady, the best at whatever you shall do. Whatever your role is, it makes you want to put forth your best effort. When you have the proper tools that you need to learn, the proper tools that, will, that will, you will need to teach, the proper environment to nurture you, make you feel safe and inspire you, then you have the tools that you need to be successful. That's why the Rochester Schools Modernization Program is so critically important for our children's future and for the future of this community. We have to make sure that our children are educated in facilities that can prepare them to be successful in all that they do. I look forward, and that's Mayor Warren saying she looks forward as well as I do, to thank the City School District, the Board of Education, the Rochester School of Modernization Programs, my colleagues on the City Council, members of our state de delegation, Governor Cuomo, and everyone else who has helped make this possible. I look forward to more celebrations and reopening in the years to come until each and every one of these schools is a modern, world-class learning institution. To the administration, God bless you, and let's go for it. Thank you for those inspiring words. So at this time, we are going to have um, Dr. Elizabeth Masidi Miller speak on behalf of the superintendent's office. This is our deputy superintendent of administration and strategic partnerships for the district. Okay, I can reach in here. Thank you, Coretta. 
Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a wonderful day. Um, thank you, Ms. Simon, uh, council members Elaine Spall and Malik Evans um, for being here with us today. I want to welcome everyone, our students, our parents, our families, our community members, for being here to help celebrate this proud moment for the district and for the school. Uh, thank you, Warren Frankel. It's wonderful to be around uh, kindred education spirits here today from our students to our founders, um, to our uh, commissioners, Commissioner Hallmark, Commissioner Powell, to our president, Van White, to our state senator, Joe Robach, Alan Williams from the Rochester Joint Schools Construction Board for being here with us today. I also want to thank all the School Without Walls students, parents, again, for lending their talents to this wonderful occasion and to all the staff members that I see out there. School Without Walls has been around for a long time now. Its history goes back to 1968 when a couple of students at Mon Monroe High School pre presented a proposal to the principal for a program that would be relevant to their lives and allow them to embrace the entire city as their classroom. The next year in October 1969, a group of teachers began to talk about what could be done for these students to attain their goals. These discussions continued for almost a year before they discovered that what, more about what parents and students were talking about. Eventually, they developed a proposal for the School Without Walls that was presented to the Superintendent of Schools in January of 1971. On February 4th, 1971, the Board of Education approved the proposal and passed a resolution creating the schools with, School Without Walls, which opened September of 1971. School Without Walls has changed over the years, but it remains true to the founding goals of assisting students in developing their skills to live in a complex society and assisting students in developing responsibility for themselves. School Without Walls students continue to be afforded the rich, in-depth, and challenging education for which they are noted. There remains excitement, commitment, and a high graduation and college-bound rate. A lot of work is here behind the School Without Walls. You might not notice the plumbing, electrical work, and life safety systems, but they're critical to creating a providing environment and efficient school that is conducive for learning. The addition of the gym, state-of-the-art fitness center, art room, science lab, now for the School Without Walls students with equitable access to facilities that will enhance their lives as students. Students feel a sense of pride in having their own space for activities, says Principal Coretta Bridges, and we're proud of this. We are fortunate to have a city that is committed to building modern facilities to serve our children that they so deserve. I want to thank our entire state delegation, the Honorable Mayor Lovely Warren and City Council, the Rochester City School District's Board of Education under the leadership of our President Van White, and the Joint Schools Construction Board for all of their efforts. Chief of Operations Mike Schmidt and his entire staff were incredibly dedicated to this project as evidenced by the excellent outcomes we see today. We are fortunate to have our union presidents, union, uh, principal bridges, our teachers, family, community partners committed to modernizing our facilities across the city for our children. I thank you on behalf of our superintendent and we consider it a privilege and honor to work with so many talented and dedicated people. I want to recognize the efforts of everyone. We are part of an equation. Your efforts are essential to ensuring that we bring all of our children to and through graduation. I want to thank everyone again for helping to achieve this milestone on behalf of our superintendent. We are on the move in the district, and we are excited and have great optimism for our schools. Our students deserve the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Massetti Miller. Before I, I move on, I do want to recognize a couple of folks on the stage who are not um, 
expecting to, to speak, but they're here in support of us anyway. Um, Mr. Malik Evans, who is city council member, for, former board member. Uh, Elaine Spall, city council member as well. And I think that's it. And some people might be thinking they're not going to speak, but they are. So they'll, they'll find that out. <laughs> So at this time, we want to welcome um, our board president, um, Van Henry White. So we are here from him right now. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen, you know, I got to be honest with you. I always feel uncomfortable, and this is the first time my colleagues have probably heard me say this. I always feel uncomfortable when they say, under the leadership of Van White. Let's keep it real. Nobody does this stuff on their own. We're a community of leaders. That not only includes members of the board, but that includes all of you out there. So let's begin by saying we are all leaders in this community. Can we all say that? We are all leaders in this community. Oh, wait a second. Let's try it again. One, two, three. We are all leaders in this community. But thank you for the introduction just the same. And indeed, I am very blessed to uh, speak on behalf of the Board of Education uh, this evening. Uh, that would include Vice President Powell. I saw Commissioner Hallmark um, and other board members who were not able to be here. I always, as many of you people have seen, we've done about five of these so far. My, my spiel is pretty much the same, but it, it's important that it's the same because the word thank you cannot be repeated enough. Because each of these buildings has the love and talent and ability of these folks, and I want to be able to recognize them on the behalf of the board each and every time. I want to begin, though, with recognizing our former board member, uh, Malik Evans. He was one of the board members, along with Commissioner Campos and Commissioner Cruz, that uh, initially or inaugurated some of these facilities, cha changes to our facility. So let's give our former board members a round of applause. Thank you, Malik. Um, I should also, on behalf of the board, uh, thank the um, members of Sabin, Sabin, I, I sometimes say Sabin, uh, for their wonderful work. These are the folks that guided the, the construction and, and renovation of all these buildings. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, then, of course, um, you may not see it, you may not notice it. I think your principal talked about it. There's all kinds of love and talent and ability and creativity that went into this building by the carpenters and the craftspeople that put this building together. The floors, oh, I don't really need that. <laughs> I've used it so many times. Um, the floors that you see, the walls that you see built up in this building were done by people with talent and ability. And to you young people out there, I would say, you can aspire to be a lawyer, you can aspire to be a carpenter, if you view the world without walls. So let's give the school of, uh, without walls a round of applause for inspiring our future carpenters, lawyers, doctors, teachers. Thank you. We want to, of course, thank Mayor Warren, who is not here today. And we also want to thank our uh, members of city council. Two of them are here today and have already been introduced. But it is critically important. You know, sometimes we, when folks get up to cut that ribbon, we forget who really is responsible. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm keep it real with you. The people, we love our young people, and that's why we have them cut the ribbon. But to be honest, I want to be brutally honest. I haven't said this before. This is a new part of the speech. We have a governor and state assembly and New York State Senate that made the money available to make these renovations. So let's give them, including our Senator Rich, uh, Mr. Ro Robach, a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be in trouble. Um, Alan Williams is a member of the uh, Facilities Modernization Board, the Joint Construction Board. Mike Smith, I do not see him here, but uh, t tell Mike if you see him, I said thank you. Will you do that for me, Carlos? Um, I want you all to know that we have staff members that have uh, worked to develop our children in a way that, again, they view this community without walls. And I saw that some of them were here on behalf of the Board of Education. Again, I want to use those very precious two words. Raise your hand if you're a teacher, you're a cafeteria person, if you're a custodian. Raise your hand high. It should be very high. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, your principal has already done this, but you can't say thank you enough to parents. These buildings mean nothing without effective parents. Don't get it twisted. Board members don't educate kids. Teachers aren't even the first to educate their kids. It's our parents. Let's give our parents a round of applause so that they can hear that we value what they do. And finally, and certainly not last, we should thank our students. First of all, for putting up with us as we tried to uh, turn this building around and make it even better than it was. I want you all to remember that this is the school without walls. And I want you students to remember that they teach you 
that learning takes place without walls. In Rochester and in Albany and especially in Washington, we have people that are building walls. Y'all can say amen to that. I'm going to use a few minutes. You can say amen. They are building walls that are preventing people from accomplishing what they need. You students not only must learn to, to uh, be educated without walls, but you must live a life without walls. People are depending on you to do that because there are roadblocks in our streets. There are walls on our borders. There are hurdles in our schools. And there are barriers at jobs. And we need people who live lives without walls. God bless you, and thank you very much. Thank you, Van White. Um, so I have to stop once again to pause from the program because as I was glancing out, I noticed another visitor that arrived, and that's my dad. So I want to say thank you, Dad. Wave your hand. Don't try to hide. OK. <laughs> Oh, his name is James Wright. Some of you may know of him as Bishop Wright from the New Progressive Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. So he's trying to hide over there. But so uh, it, without him, there would be no me. So I have to recognize my dad. So thanks for coming. <laughs> and so next, we, we um, we're expecting uh, Cynthia Elliott as the, uh, one of the board reps for School Without Walls, but unfortunately she had a death in her family and was not able to be here tonight. So our thoughts and prayers are with her. However, um, Commissioner Willa Powell is here and is going to say hello to us from the board. Thank you, Coretta, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I know it's kind of cold out there for you in the audience, so I'll be so brief. I, um, we are leaving for, some of us are going to the wake immediately after this uh, to um, be with Cynthia uh, in, in, at this time. But I get the honor, I don't know if, if Coretta knew this, then she's like, has more insight than I would have thought, and, or longer memory than I thought anyone would have. My first, I was the liaison to this school in my first term in 1998 through 2001. And then I left the board, and so the liaisonship was given to another board member, and I never got it back. So the moral of the story is this is a coveted space. <laughs> Everybody wants to be in it. Everybody wants to be the liaison to it. I think there probably uh, are arm wrestling contests for teachers to to be the uh, represent or to to be the in uh, instructional leaders in this space and. And that's how it should be in all of our buildings. And it's a delight to see that in action here. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to recognize um, our chief of schools, Toya Wilson, who is here. Our chief of schools, Carmine Peluso, is out of town. But Toya is here supporting. So I thank you so much for being here with us. Um, so this person probably didn't know he was going to speak, but um, Jim Shepard was um, expected to be here, and he was unable to make it. However, since Senator Joe Robach was able to make it and be here, I'd like for him to come and at least say hello to us. Thank you. Thank you. I, hey, Joe. Thank, thank, thank you, Principal Bridges. I was getting a little bit nervous. She looked right at me. She didn't say my name. I thought maybe you were mad. No. Uh, you've been standing for a while, but this is such a great occasion. I, I would just say very briefly, thank you to everybody that put this together. It truly uh, was my honor and privilege to sponsor this legislation in the Senate, shepherd it through both houses and get it signed by the governor. And I mean this sincerely. We get to deal with a lot of things. But this is so great because it's really all about the students that we were able to get these buildings fixed up, modernized, great aesthetics, environmentally sound, so many great things, more conducive for learning, anchoring neighborhoods, and just a great improvement that this is something I can see. And what's so great about this is it's not only going to help the students today, but this is going to serve students here at School Without Walls for generations to come. You already have a great reputation for learning. This is only going to help. And I'm not as profound as Van White, 
So I'm going to quote one of my favorite people, Buzz Lightyear, to infinity and beyond. That's awesome. Okay. So as many of the speakers have said, we do want to, to be able to bring you inside so you can get to see this beautiful facility that you keep hearing about. Um, and so I want to just introduce our, our last speaker of the evening. And um, when he finishes his comments, I will not come back to you. That will be the end of our program. And then you will all be invited to come on in. and see this great place. And parents who are here to talk to and visit with teachers tonight, you're welcome to do that at that time as well. So our final speaker for this evening is Mr. Alan Williams, and he is representing the uh, Rochester Joint Schools Construction Board. So, oh, and then of course we have to do the ribbon cutting, I'm sorry. That's really why we're here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and I promise that I will, uh, I will be brief. But let me, let me start out by, I'd like to, to borrow some words from Lincoln uh, in his Gettysburg Address, in which he said, the world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it will never forget what they did here. And to a large extent, it's true, because one minute after I sit down, no one will ever remember what I said. However, Every day that a student walks in this building and they go to their science room or they go to Mrs. Bond's art, art class or to the gymnasium, they will never forget what they did here. And the they in this, in this instance is the team that made this happen. And indulge me for a few minutes while I in, introduce you to that team. I, the starting off with is seven engineers who are the program manager for the, for the project. Uh, and at seven we have uh, the vice president is Pepin Asilian. And Pepin really is the, the, the person who directed this entire, who orchestrated the, not only this project, but the four other projects that we cut the ribbon on over the last couple of, last couple of weeks. And, and working with Pepin is his deputy, Roley Coleman. And then there is also uh, Travis Miller. And Kim Mitchell. And are there any, any other seven team members here today? And before I, before I go on with the, with the rest of the, the introductions, I'd like to introduce two members of the Rochester Joint School Construction Board, Ms. Rosalind Brooks-Harris, and Ms. Gina Cruz. And the, the Joint Board is really the governing body of the o overall of the Rochester School Modernization Project. Uh, and now under Pepin, we have the the program, well, the project manager, in this case, it was, uh, well, Wayne Hermanson, who is not, I don't think he's here today, but we also have Rob Skeel from Gilbane. And then the construction manager, uh, the Pike Company, who was represented here by Margo Turner, Margo. And then the, the designer, the architect who designed the building, uh, Clark Patterson Lee, uh, and the two people who worked on the project were Corey Hunzinger and Sarah Katz. And I'd also like to, to introduce some other key players in the overall project. Uh, and I see some representatives from uh, Vargas Associates, uh, David Blaine, and Fina Santiago. And we also have, I'd like to introduce also, Linda Eulis from Avaris, who was really instrumental in getting this uh, project to final completion. And also Jeff Wild, who is the, uh, who works with Baker Tilly, who is the independent compliance officer, 
and they are the people, they are the ones who really, for the most part, keep us out of jail. And <laughs> so, and, and out of jail, right, out of jail is good. So these are, you know, these are the people um, that really brought this together and made this happen. So to the students and the staff and to the teachers, as you go into, and the parents, uh, as you come into the building and, and see what we've done, and as you walk into this building every day, um, on behalf of the Rochester Joint School Construction Board uh, and the entire project team, we want to say that we hope that this is, or the building that you have here today is really conducive to teaching and learning. And thank you very much for allowing us to work on this project, and we hope that we have more than lived up to your expectations. Thank you. Okay, so I'm back, but only briefly. So I'm going to ask um, Malik and any of our student performers that are still here to join me for the cutting of the ribbon. As we get set to do that, we just would like to ask everyone here, Twitter, Facebook, we'd like for you to sign up if you aren't already on RSMP Schools. Please, follow us, like us, because this is the way you can keep up with the latest as projects continue in phase two, as well as phase three, which is in planning. Monday evening, six o'clock at Monroe High, we're having a town hall to discuss the plans for phase three of the modernization program. But please, like us, friend us on any one of your favorite handles, RSMP Schools. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>